turn on the sewing machine. Step on the foot controller to start sewing. We'll explain how to use the hand wheel. Always turn the hand wheel towards you. When the hand wheel mark is aligned with the line on the machine, the needles are at their highest positions. Here, we'll explain the front cover. Open the front cover, for example, when threading the machine. To open the front cover, slide it to the right and then lower it toward you. Accessories can be stored inside for safekeeping. To close the front cover, lift it up and then slowly return it to its original position. Next, we'll show you how to replace the presser foot. Always turn off the machine before replacing the presser foot. To remove the presser foot, first raise the presser foot lever. Turn the hand wheel toward you and align its mark with the line on the machine. Push the button on the presser foot holder to release the presser foot. Raise the presser foot lever and remove the presser foot. First, lift the presser foot lever, then insert the presser foot under the presser foot holder. Align the bar on the presser foot with the groove in the presser foot holder. Lower the presser foot lever to secure the presser foot. Next, we'll show you how to use free arm sewing. If you remove the bed extension, you can sew tubular pieces with free arm sewing. Next, we'll show you how to remove and install a needle. Always turn off the machine beforehand. Turn the hand wheel toward you and align its mark with the line on the machine. Raise the needles to their highest position. Use the included screwdriver to replace a needle. Turn the needle set screw counterclockwise to loosen it. Remove the needle. Tighten the screw and you are finished. Insert the new needle with its flat side toward the back of the machine. Push the needle up until it stops. Turn the needle set screw clockwise to tighten it. This completes the installation of the needle. Next, we'll explain how to prepare for threading the machine. Always turn off the machine beforehand. Pull up the thread tree and then place the thread spools on the spool pins. Raise the presser foot lever. To raise the presser foot, turn the hand wheel toward you and align its mark with the line on the machine. At this time, the needle should be at their highest positions. This completes the preparations for threading. Next, We'll explain how to thread the cover stitch. Always turn off the machine beforehand. From right to left, the spools are for the looper, top cover thread, right needle, center needle, and left needle. Open the front cover.
First, we'll show you how to thread the looper. Pull the thread through the thread guides 1 and 2 on the thread tree from back to front. Pass the thread to the front of the thread guide 3. Slide the thread through the thread guide 3. Then pass the thread through the looper thread tension dial disc. Pass the thread through the threading points up to 9 in the order of the blue numbers. Push the looper release lever to move the looper to the right. Pass the thread through the looper thread guide, then through the eye of the looper from the front. Return the looper to its original position. This completes threading of the looper. Next, we'll thread the left needle center needle, and right needle in that order. In the same way as the looper thread, pass the thread up to, then through the tension disc next to the thread tension dial. Pass the left needle thread to the left of the branching plate. Continue threading through the pre-tension and needle bar thread guide. Thread the eye of the needle from front to back. Pass the center and right needle threads to the right of the branching plate. Thread the eyes of the corresponding needles to complete the threading. Next, we'll explain how to thread the top cover stitch. Sew a cover stitch seam first before threading the top cover thread. Turn the hand wheel toward you and align its mark with the top cover mark on the machine. Install these parts before sewing the top cover stitch. With the top cover spreader opened, clamp it onto the top stitch drive shaft from the right side. Insert the top cover thread guide. Turn the hand wheel toward you until its mark is aligned with the line on the machine. After passing the thread through thread guides 1 and 2, pass the thread through 3. Then pass the thread through the top cover thread tension dial and pass the thread through the thread guides. Pass the thread through this part of the top cover thread guide. Raise the presser foot lever and then pass the thread under the presser foot. Make sure that the thread is taut and then lower the lever to return the presser foot to its original position. Please turn the hand wheel towards you a few times to check that the stitches are formed. This completes threading. Next, we'll explain how to adjust the stitch. Use the looper thread tension adjustment lever to make fine adjustments to the looper thread tension. Normally, this lever is in the middle 
raise the lever to reduce the slack in the looper thread. Lower the lever to increase the slack in the looper thread. Next, we'll explain how to adjust the stitch length. The normal stitch length setting is three. For shorter stitches, set the stitch length adjustment dial to a lower value. For longer stitches, set the dial to a higher value. Next, we'll show you how to adjust the differential feed. This machine is equipped with two sets of feed dogs, one at the front and one at the back. For the best result, adjust the differential feed according to the fabric. The normal differential feed setting is 1.0. For fabrics that tend to pucker during sewing, set the differential feed between 0.7 and 1.0. For fabrics that tend to stretch during sewing, set the differential feed between 1.0 and 2.0. Next, we'll show you how to use the presser adjustment screw to adjust the presser foot pressure. The normal pressure foot pressure setting is 2. Turn the pressure adjustment screw clockwise to increase the presser foot pressure. Or turn it counterclockwise to reduce the pressure. Next, we'll show you how to use the tension dials to adjust the thread tension. The standard thread tension setting for this machine is four. For lighter tension, set the dial to a lower value. For greater tension, set the dial to a higher value. Next, we'll explain how to sew trial cover stitches. Turn on the sewing machine. Raise the presser foot. Place fabric under the presser foot. Lower the presser foot. Turn the hand wheel toward you a few times to check that stitches are formed. While guiding the fabric with your hands, step on the foot controller to start sewing. After sewing a short distance, check that the stitches are uniform. If the stitches are not neat, try adjusting the stitches as previously explained. Next, we'll show you how to remove the fabric from the machine. Turn the hand wheel towards you and align its mark with the line on the machine to raise the needles to their highest positions. Raise the presser foot lever. Grab the fabric at the end of stitching and then pull it to the back of the machine. Cut the needle threads that come out from the front of the fabric. Slowly pull the fabric so the ends of the cut needle threads are pulled to the back of the fabric. After the needle threads are completely pulled to the back of the fabric, cut the looper thread that comes out from the back of the fabric. Tie together all thread ends pulled to the back of the fabric.
Next, we'll show you how to sew trial top cover stitches. Turn on the sewing machine and then raise the presser foot. Place fabric under the presser foot. Lower the presser foot. Turn the hand wheel toward you a few times to check that stitches are formed. While guiding the fabric with your hands, step on the foot controller to start sewing. After sewing a short distance, check that the stitches are uniform. If the stitches are not neat, try adjusting the stitching as previously explained. Next, we'll show you how to remove the fabric from the machine. Turn the hand wheel toward you and align its mark with the line on the machine to raise the needles to their highest positions. Raise the presser foot lever. Grab the fabric at the end of stitching and then pull it to the back of the machine. Cut the needle threads at the top cover thread that come out from the front of the fabric. Slowly pull the fabric so that the ends of the cut needle threads are pulled to the back of the fabric. After the needle threads are completely pulled to the back of the fabric, cut the looper thread that comes out from the back of the fabric. Use a needle to push the top cover thread from the front of the fabric to the back. Tie together all thread ends pulled to the back of the fabric. Next, we'll show you how to use scrap fabric to stabilize the beginning of stitching. Raise the presser foot and then place scrap fabric under the presser foot. Lower the presser foot, turn the hand wheel toward you a few times, and then start sewing. After stitching nears the edge of the scrap fabric, raise the presser foot. Place the fabric under the presser foot and then lower the presser foot. Continue sewing. Once the stitching nears the edge of the fabric, raise the presser foot. Place another piece of scrap fabric under the presser foot and then lower the presser foot. Continue sewing. Cut the threads between the fabric and the pieces of scrap fabric. Here, we'll explain the different types of cover stitches. Three needle, four thread triple cover stitch. Two needle, three thread cover stitch with a six millimeter width. Two needle, three thread cover stitch with a three millimeter width. This stitch uses the center needle and right needle. One needle, two thread chain stitch. This stitch uses the center needle. Here we'll explain the different types of top cover stitches. Three needle, five thread triple top cover stitch. Two needle, four thread top cover stitch with a six millimeter width. Two needle, four thread top cover stitch with a three millimeter width. This stitch uses the center needle and right needle. Let's take a look at some sewing techniques available with optional accessories. When using optional accessories, 
use the included clear foot. Hemming set. You can use this hemming set to sew hemming quickly and easily. This cannot be used with a top cover stitch. Bias tape holder. You can use this holder to sew bias tape easily on a neckline or to cover a seam. Belt loop guide. You can use this guide to sew belt loops easily. Bias tape binding set. You can use this guide to sew bias tape easily onto the edge of fabric. This set contains a large guide for wide bias tape and a small guide for narrow bias tape. Dual function folder binder. You can use this binder to fold 32 millimeter wide fabric tape into eight millimeter wide double fold bias tape and easily sew it onto fabric. This accessory can also be used as a binder for single fold bias tape. Pass the fabric through the binder to the front of the stitching. Use the two screws included with the machine to install the binder. Next, we'll cover machine maintenance. Always turn off the sewing machine before performing maintenance operations. Open the front cover. Use the included cleaning brush to clean the machine. We recommend performing regular maintenance.